Welcome. This tutorial will show you how to set up interactive presentations, perfect for design reviews or any communication during product development. We will start by importing multiple model options from Rhino into Vectri, then set up floating UIs to seamlessly switch between models. We will also improve the visualization with materials and lighting options. Let's start in Rhino. Organize your models in a single CAD file or separate them into multiple CAD files, each containing a single design option. If you choose a single file, ensure the models are properly grouped to streamline the texturing process in Vectri. Once everything is ready, export the project in either .obj, .fbx, or .step format. Among these, FBX is the preferred option, as it retains the most information and is widely supported for 3D workflows. Now, let's move over to Vectory. Start by creating a new project in your workspace. To speed things up, select one of the quick scene presets. For this tutorial, we'll use the three light setup with a light background for a clean and simple start. Import your model by dragging and dropping it onto the canvas. Adjust the positioning of the models and select the appropriate size preset that best fits your design. Size presets adjust the positioning of the lights to match the size of your object. Let's tidy up the scene by quickly removing unused elements of the presets. Delete the placeholders and ungroup the variance group. Remove the preset description, floating UI, and rename the project. Switch to the camera view and make any final adjustments to the positions of the objects. Unlock the camera to make the necessary changes, and once satisfied, lock it back into place. We have three distinct designs, and they're all visible at once. To display them individually, let's add them to a variance group. Select all object groups, then add variants from the top menu. Variance tool combines all objects into one group in which only one object can be displayed at a time. This works by using a radio button switch. Next, the texturing process. For this tutorial, we'll keep the process straightforward as achieving top tier visual quality isn't our focus. This approach is perfect for a quick design review where efficiency is key. However, if you invest more time in refining the textures, baking lights, and ambient occlusion, the overall project will look significantly better. The objects were already grouped by material in Rhino, simplifying the texturing process. To texture a group, select it and open the material library. Vectory offers a comprehensive selection of high quality materials. For the matte tee sections, choose a suitable plastic material. A quick tip. UV mapping is the process of projecting a 2D texture onto a 3D model essentially wrapping the flat design around the object's surface. In Vectory Studio, you can choose from various projection methods to achieve the desired texture alignment. Options include plane, cube, sphere, and cylinder projections, as well as unwrapping for more complex models. Each method is tailored to different shapes, giving you the flexibility to adapt textures seamlessly to your 3D design. Experimenting with these options can help you refine your textures for a polished and professional look. For the shiny parts, select the relevant group and choose a metallic material from the library. For the holder, We'll use the same matte material. To apply the same material across different objects, use the eyedropper tool from the material list or press the I key as a shortcut. Finally, we need to texture the camera lens. Vectory allows you to create custom material libraries, making it easy to save and reuse frequently used materials in future projects. 
In this case, since we've already saved the camera lens material, it's ready for use. Apply the material, then open the Texture Projection tab to adjust its alignment. Use the Plane Projection tool to test different angles until you find the best fit. Fine-tune any additional settings to ensure the material suits the scene perfectly. Once we've finished texturing one variant, we can efficiently apply the same textures to other objects. Simply select a new object group and use the eyedropper tool to copy the material from the previously textured variant. This method streamlines the workflow, allowing you to maintain consistency across all design options without the need to manually repeat the texturing process for each one. It's a fast and effective way to ensure uniformity, saving valuable time during quick design reviews. This efficiency lets you focus on refining and presenting your designs instead of repetitive tasks. Do this for all variants in your project. With all three objects textured, we'll now create a floating UI to act as a variant switcher. Add a floating UI from the top menu. To add a text element, simply insert it and type in your desired content. Slightly increase the font weight and size to make it more prominent and easy to read. Next, add a variant element to the floating UI to create interactive functionality. Select the Your Source from the drop-down list to link the UI to your design options. This step ensures that users can effortlessly switch between different variants directly within the UI, enhancing the overall presentation. Preview the project to confirm that it functions correctly. We've created a project with a floating UI that allows seamless switching between three design variants, ideal for presenting options to colleagues. To refine the floating UI and create dedicated versions for each design, start by repositioning the existing UI to the bottom center of the screen and adjusting its offset. Change the width to around 310 pixels for a wider appearance. Disable the fill color, remove the shadow, and enable the blur effect at 30 pixels. Preview the project again to ensure it looks good. Now, duplicate the main floating UI to create separate versions for each design. Move the duplicate to the top center, remove the text and variant elements, and add an image element. We have already prepared Figma frames for the floating UIs, making the process quick and efficient. Start by copying the frame link for the first design option in Figma and use it as an image in the floating UI within Vectary. Replace the texture with the Figma frame link to establish a seamless connection. For more detailed guidance, you can find other tutorials on YouTube that explain the in-depth use of Figma frames. Adjust the offset as needed and rename the floating UI for clarity. Repeat this process for the second and third design options to maintain consistency across all variants. After setting up the floating UI for the first design, duplicating the UI for the second and third options is quick and straightforward. Simply duplicate the floating UI and replace the image with the appropriate Figma frame link for each design. This method speeds up the workflow, ensuring each variant has a dedicated, visually consistent UI. Using Figma frames in this way streamlines updates. Any changes made in Figma can be quickly refreshed in Vectary without manual adjustments. This seamless integration makes it easy to test and iterate on different design elements, saving time and maintaining accuracy across your project. Finally, organize the floating UIs by grouping each with its corresponding design variant. This way, each floating UI will only be visible when the specific variant is active. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We've seen how easy it is to import and organize multiple design options in Vectory, apply consistent materials, 
and create a seamless presentation using floating UI. Whether you're preparing for weekly or monthly design reviews, this workflow helps you present your designs clearly and effectively. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. Feel free to share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.